very much Thank indeed. You. Appreciate that. Today, you are watching history being made on Charlton TV because for the first time ever, we have packed our bags and gone to an away venue. Yes, here we are in sunny South Yorkshire, Oakwell Stadium, home of Barnsley, 190 miles away from our comfy studio at uh, the Valley. Let's hope it's worth it. The Addicts recorded their joint record away league victory here in April 2013. But since then, we have not tasted victory at Oakwell in three further attempts. After an indifferent start to the season, the Tykes are now four unbeaten in all competitions and have won two of the last three in League One. Let's also not forget they were a championship club just last season too. It certainly promises to be another tough test for us today. We've got lots to get through ahead of kickoff here in Barnsley. Here is just a taster of what is to come. Ben Garner is back in the dugout this afternoon after recovering from COVID-19. We'll hear from the manager who spoke to Terry Smith yesterday morning. We hear from academy graduates Aaron Henry and Richard Chin who were presented with their league debut shirts during the week. And we also hear from goal-scoring midfielder and new dad, Scott Frazier, who was back in the squad last week following the birth of his first child. Well, unbelievably, we have managed to persuade Stevie Brown to come up north <laughs> a little bit further on the M25. <laughs> Mate, it's great to see you. The only reason you came up is you could travel up with me, wasn't Absolutely, it? Absolutely, yeah. What a horror story that is. We'll tell well, that we, at some point. We I guess. nearly didn't make it, oh, did we? Oh, my God. Yeah, planes, trains, and automobiles, wasn't it? Absolutely. Oh, and Curbs, where's Curbs? He pulled a cough, didn't he, on Thursday? <laughs> yeah. He had, a, he had a meal out for a charity event and he went to get up off a chair and his calf went not allowed to travel. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Alan Kerbishley isn't here, but we are both absolutely delighted to say that this man is. And it is welcome back to Charlton TV, Peter Shirtliff. Shirtliff, an absolute pleasure. <laughs> After all these years to be alongside you, it's just a shame that Brownie's here. But <laughs> I have to say, the person I looked up to most when I was wearing a Charlton shirt, so it's an absolute pleasure. How are you? I'm very well, thanks, Scott. Really good. Yeah, good. Being a Yorkshireman as well, do you have to commute much? Do you still live around these? Shows? I live on the west coast, so um, it's not a bad run to be fair. I've got a lot of family around here, and uh, it was nice to come over this morning, see my sisters, and then come to this game this afternoon. Very nice. Yeah. Nice to be at one of your another one of your former clubs as well. Yeah, I, I had some good times here. Um, played for two years. One of the second year we got promoted to the Premier League, and then I was assistant manager for nearly three years. So um, we, we lost in the uh, playoff final, which was a good playoff final. To be fair, I think Ipswich beat us four two in the end, but it was a really good game. And uh, Dave Bassett was manager, so that was a nice experience. But um, yeah, good memories. More importantly, though, great to be back with Charlton TV, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Really, really. <laughs> well, listen, it's great to see you. And, and look, looking at the game here, I mean, it actually, it's brilliant to be here, as much as the journey was a bit of a nightmare. It's difficult for us away from home at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, I mean... What do we need to do to turn it around? Well, I said this last week, you've got to, you've got first of all, must stop conceding goals. You know, you, you've got to stop needing two to win a game. And uh, we've drawn far too many. 
Um, you know, we've shown a little bit of character at times coming back, but we've lost quite a few leads as well. And, and for me, just, just can we have a game where we, where we look solid defensively? We don't look like we're going to concede. And if we can do that, it gives you a much better opportunity for your front boys just to need that odd goal to get you three points. How about getting a, a first away win of the season, Shirty? How do we do it? Well, the need, obviously, they need to score goals. Um, and like Brownie says, not concede. And hopefully, the, the longer the game goes on, the, the, the fans here can turn. You know, if, if, the, if they're not in front and, and they're not playing great, the, the fans can turn a little bit. And Charlton have got to frustrate them. It's as simple as that, you know. Yeah. OK, well, uh, lots to get through today. We've got so much to talk about. Let's hear from the manager, Ben Garner, who was speaking to Terry Smith yesterday. Ben, first of all, great to see you back in person again. How are you feeling after your bout of COVID last week? Thank you. Yeah, much better. Um, I had a, a cold at the start of the week and then that turned into COVID. So, uh, yeah, not the best of weeks, but I feel much better and great to be back in. And just looking back at Fleetwood last weekend, probably a bit of a unique experience for you. How did you find it watching from afar? Tough, to be honest. Um, a lot harder than being there in person, but um, huge credit go to the, to the staff for, for stepping in and, and doing a great job and, and also to the players on the day. So I was trying to help as much as I could from a, from a distance, but it's certainly not the same. Um, but we, we were disappointed with the first half and um, uh, the, the shape that we, that we played didn't work and we made changes and corrected that at half time and the second half was a much improved performance and in the end we were disappointed not to come away with three points but we've just got to keep banging on that door and trying to get those three points that we want. You touched on it there and I think Fleetwood manager Scott Brown called it a game of two halves as well afterwards so we were much improved after the break. How were you able to communicate with the players at half-time or did you communicate with the players at half-time? No, I spoke with the players via a Zoom link before the game um, and then I was, uh, uh, I was on the phone to Anthony Hayes during the first half and, and spoke with him and Scott at half-time. So um, literally just before half-time, spoke with them about making the change, um, changing shape, changing personnel um, and addressing a few things and then um, also told them to get into them a little bit because we, we were off it first half. So uh, massive credit to, to Scott and Hazy because they, they did great with that. And, and massive credit to the players because it was a big turnaround in the second half and much more, much more like the levels of performance that we want. And on to Saturday now, another away trip, another long away trip. What are we expecting from Barnsley? Barnsley are a good side. I think they've got a really good manager in, in Michael Duff that's, that's done well at Cheltenham and has deservedly got a, a, a move to a, sorry, a bigger club, but probably a, a better opportunity for him in terms of finances and budget, etc. So they're very well organised. Um, uh, their defensive shape is very good and they've got good quality throughout their team. They're a threat of set pieces. Um, they're clever with how they play their front three now. Uh, they generally play two good footballers in the middle of the park as a, as a double pivot in there to change the play. And they've got good whip through their wing backs. So um, they're a good team. They've actually been better away from home than at home at the moment. But uh, we know we're going to have to go there and certainly hit levels that we did in the second half in Fleetwood and probably better than that to, to win the game. And there's been lots of talk so far this season about sort of Ipswich, Sheffield Wednesday, Portsmouth in recent weeks. Barnsley have obviously just come down from the Championship. They're now up to sixth after a, a bit of a slow start. Are they sort of serious contenders in your eyes as well? Yeah, of course. You know, anyone that's come down from the Championship last season is uh, generally got a good squad and a good nucleus in place, and they'd be well backed clubs. So um, they're they're a good side, and as I say, got a good manager, and they you can see that they're well coached, very well organised, um, especially without the ball, um, and they and they pose good threats. They pose good threats across the pitch. Uh, it's a, it's a, a decent sized pitch there at, at Barnsley, which I think will, will help in terms of making it uh, hopefully a little bit more open. Um, and we go there looking to focus on our performance levels. You know, let's get what we're good at right, let's get our intensity right, let's make sure that we're fighting and outworking Barnsley. And then uh, we do that, we've got the quality within the group to come away with those three points. And in some ways, they're in kind of a similar situation to us in that they've come under new management. Mm -hmm in the summer with Michael Duff, as you say, do you expect them to maybe get stronger as the season goes on? Yeah, I, I expect Michael would want that, as I would want here. You know, you think with more time to get your ideas across and more time to develop the culture and the way of working that you want, that um, things would improve. That's not always a, a linear line, there's ups and downs along the way, but overall you would like to see that progress being made. So Michael did that very well at Cheltenham and I'm, I'm sure he'd be looking to do the same at Barnsley. And looking at us, you say it's about us and focusing on our performance. Where, where do you think we can hurt them on Saturday? 
we've had a really good week on the on, on the training ground, and I've noticed a real difference this week in terms of obviously Mandela Egbo's back fit. We've got Stephen Session on back fit in full training, and that makes a difference. Um, so for us, we've got. Uh, I think 18 first team outfield players and when you've got four or five of those injured it, it does become more difficult and now we've got that competition back that intensity back I would expect to see that in our performance on on Saturday we have to be good with the ball in terms of spaces I think that we can expose their shape when they when they drop into their defensive block um, and we've the way they play is clever with the front three so we've, we've done a lot on the defensive work this week as well in terms of trying to nullify that and deal with that um, but I just want the players to be positive, go and be nice and brave. If they can go and play as they've trained this week, then it should be a good performance. Well, that is certainly what we're looking for. And good to see Ben back to full health as well. Let's have a look at the team then, shall we? It is uh, three changes from the draw last week. Maka comes in for his first appearance of the season with, with Joe. You know where he was? He was in France. Pagana playing against Brazil. Oh, lost 3-0. Tough call that, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Here or... <laughs> France against Brazil. But a, a greater opportunity for Maka, you have to say. It's a full debut for Mandela Egbo. And also Albie Morgan is in as well. So what do you think, Brownie? Yeah, I mean, listen. Four at the back, of course, which is what we did in the second half last yeah, season, well, not the uh, last week, not the first. Yeah, because we finished strong. You know, we changed shape in the first half. Uh, it didn't go particularly well. Fleetwood overran us. They were more energetic. They got in our faces. They pressurised well and they thoroughly deserved their 1 0 lead. And listening to Ben there, Quite rightly, I think a few words would have been said at half time. The change of shape was, I think, was only natural. You know, the, the, if you look at Ragsaki and Blackett Taylor in that formation, we had one up front next to Stockley and one in a wing back position, and it just didn't work. There are two most dangerous players, and they couldn't get in the game. So I think that naturally pings back to what it was because you need those two players to, you know, be on top of their game for us to get anything going forward. Um, the surprise, I guess, was Claire going to left back, but he is proving to be very, very useful wherever he pops up. You know, whether it's right side of centre half, right back, or left back, he's, he's he's in good form. So Egbo came on and made a difference as well. To be honest with you, he, he came on, he looked strong, he looked quick, he looked powerful. He got four, he got um, on the front foot, he got into attacking areas, he hit the post. Um, so I think it's a good decision to put him in as well. Yeah, I don't know if you can see the lads uh, behind us at the moment getting warmed up. Um, Shirty, in terms of a, a change of system from three at the back to a four, yeah. and then how do you feel that works during a game? If something doesn't work as a, as a three, which normally you've been playing four three three all season, right. the first half last last week didn't work in right. a three, so it went to four. Do you feel they should stick to a system, or do you have to be flexible? Well, I, think, I think these days with the modern game now, you probably have to be a little bit flexible. Just today, I'm just looking at Barnes's formation. They generally do play with a three at the back. So I'm going to be a little bit wary of how, Bar uh, how um, Barnsley's wing-backs do and, and how Charlton cope with that width that Barnsley will have. So that is a threat, I think, in, in terms of how, how Charlton have got to start defending. That is a problem in terms of the 4-3-3. It's a system I really like, but when you're up against a 3-4-2-1, a you have to be careful out wide, don't you? The yeah, this is especially a... if Sean, you know, he's very versatile. Yeah. He's he's been superb, really. But playing in a number of positions at the moment, he's definitely not left back. No, he's not. And there's a couple of issues with that system. For me, if you look at their midfield, it's in a box shape. The box yeah. shape has caused us a few issues. All right, Dobson sitting has normally been ganged up either side of, and it caused us issues at Ipswich away last year, where they totally outplayed us. It was a little bit similar uh, a couple of games ago, actually, where they, they, they ganged up on Dobson either side and we couldn't cope with it. And we, and I said that day, we need to find a way to accommodate that. When a team gets on top of us and you can see that they've got players either side of Dobson plus two sitting behind that, we've got to find a way in our system from, our, from the way we play to accommodate that when we're, when we're getting overrun. But the key to it all for me is possession. Right? and not just possession in your own half, but possession in their half. And that allows you to then, if you keep four, five, six passes, you can suddenly get on top of an opponent because we'll have an advantage out wide as well with our system. We can get 2v1s if we play it right. If we keep the right possession, build up play in the right manner, you're forcing one of their centre halves to come out and defend 1v1 in the channel. So we can get on top of it, but it, you know, I think we always don't emphasise enough on, it's down to the players on the yeah. day and what they deliver. Um, and we need to get a 90 minute performance, not a 45 or a 30. We need a 90 minute performance. If we can do that, I think we can get on top. Yeah, we have to yeah. impose our game and our system and formation onto that. Yeah. Should I have to say, back in the day, you were a big strapping centre half. Look at the lads now. The big lads, aren't they? They're like a little fullback <laughs> like me now. <laughs> I 
I've shrunk they are big now, aren't they? I've shrunk, mate. I'm getting older. <laughs> and he, he was like a giant. When he I was. first turned up a child, you're like, oh, oh, keep out of the way, a shirt. <laughs> the modern day footballer is a big, big person. It okay, is. let's have a look at the league table now, shall we? Because we are in 14th, but we are still only three points off the coveted playoff places. At the foot of the table, Bristol Rovers and Forest Green dropped into the relegation zone as Accrington and MK Dons escaped, rising to 17th and 18th. Burton and Morecambe remain in the bottom two, though, despite picking up their first wins of the season last time out. Into the top half now, and it's as you were with Ipswich, Portsmouth, Plymouth and Sheffield Wednesday all drawing on Saturday. Today's opponents, Barnsley, rose five places to sixth with a 3-0 win at Cambridge last weekend. Derby returned to the top half with a 2-1 victory at home to Wickham on Saturday. No Liam Rosinia at the helm, of course, but I would like to wish Paul Warren, someone I know very well indeed, all the very best there. And Lincoln were the big movers last weekend. They climbed from 16th to 8th following a 6-3 victory at Bristol Rovers. And Brownie, I said as... You know, Lincoln rising eight places last weekend. And that really shows still, with everyone pretty tight, what a difference a win can make. Yeah, it's incredibly condensed, isn't it? Because you, you know what I'm like? It, we're three points off a second bottom as well. Yeah, I know. So uh, glass it's, it's half full you are. Uh, half empty, sorry. <laughs> half glass realistic. But it, it, what it shows is it's incredibly condensed. A little run. Just two or three victories yep. on the trot, trot and you are catapulting yourself into the into the top six, no problem. But unfortunately, if, you, if we keep picking up too many draws as we are, that, that bottom seven or eights are getting tighter and tighter every week. And you, you just don't want that. You don't want the pressure. You don't want to be looking over your shoulder. A couple of wins now will be absolutely uh, perfect timing in terms of us. Uh, rising up the, uh, the levels. Absolutely. In terms of Barnsley, Shirty, if you, if you can hear me okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, have you made, what have you seen of them this season? They're back in the, the player positions at the moment. Do you feel they could stay there? Well, I saw them early season and I was a little bit surprised. I think they lost, I can't remember all they were playing, but I was surprised they weren't better than they were. But they seem to have picked up a little bit lately. They beat Sheffield Wednesday 2-0. Um, and like you say, I think they've won, what, two out of the last three. So they, they probably are coming to a little bit of form. I, I don't know really, Scott. I, I've, I've not really seen enough of them other than other than that particular game. OK, let's have a look at the fixtures now then, shall we, in League One this afternoon. Of course, what is an international break? So it is a reduced fixture list. Mm. A Forest Green against Exeter, well underway in the early kickoff there. Two of last season's playoff contestants, Sheffield Wednesday and Wickham square off at Hillsborough while Peterborough had lost their last six in all competitions before Tuesday's Papa John's trophy win against Spurs under 21 will certainly be hoping to return to winning ways at home to Port Vale Plymouth welcome Ipswich tomorrow at noon a brownie other than our fixture of course that's a standout fixture isn't it I think our, yeah, our fixtures, it, it looks quite appetising. Sheffield Wednesday, Wickham Wanderers. But there's a lot of games there, Scotty, where the clubs below us can pick up points. They look quite weak fixtures. And there's, there's a few teams below us that can pick up points today, which puts a bit of an added pressure on, I think, yeah. the result. Uh, I've asked you about Barnsley, Shirty. What about another one of your former clubs, Sheffield Wednesday, the recruitment they've had and, and how you feel this season's gone so far for them? Well, they've signed a lot of players, that's for sure. Um, and I think when you do that, you've got to give them a bit of time to sort of adapt and gel. But results have not been fantastic, let's just say that. They're a little, they're a little bit off off the pace in terms of Ipswich, and, uh, who are obviously top. I just think it's going to take a little bit of time for, to get the true true measure of Sheffield Wednesday this season. Yeah. Uh, and Peterborough? I mean, yeah. they've come down, they started well, they yeah. haven't done well recently. I mean, does that kind of show exactly what League One is all about? Yeah, I, I think I think we've said this before. The first 10 games, everybody's sorting themselves out. New players are adjusting to uh, different managers, different systems maybe, and it will level itself out. What, will, what you do tend to find is, and it's difficult to judge early in the season, when you get past Christmas, you get into January, February, the stronger squads tend to show their mettle, don't they? They yeah. tend to come good later on in the season. And you do get this... Um, 
sort of false impression of the league as it sits sometimes. I, I'd, I'd say Exeter right now in sixth is, is, is not where they're going to end up. It's a bit harsh. Someone will give me a slap, I'm sure, from Exeter. Well, we're going to end up there, aren't we? Uh, let's hope so, Scotty. Yeah, let's hope so. But, I mean, Ipswich looked really strong. We did predict that last season. There were noises coming out of Ipswich that they were going to go for it this year and they were going to be particularly strong. They changed manager. He looks like a really good acquisition. Portsmouth for the surprise one for me. I didn't think they'd feature this year. Not Certainly not for the top two automatics. Um, and the Cowley brothers have done very well to, to, to manoeuvre a squad in position there that's got mm. them threatening, yeah. Mm. OK, let's take a, a quick break from today, shall we, and talk about club news updates. And as ever, we shall start with ticketing news. We'd like to remind supporters that they can make savings on home match tickets by purchasing an Addicts 3-pack. The 3-pack enables you to make one purchase and then select three home league fixtures that you would like to attend between now and Boxing Day. Now, you don't have to select all three matches at the time of purchase. You can choose your games as and when you want to. And what's more, you will save £10 on the cost of getting three individual tickets. Our next men's team home game is on Saturday, October the 1st against Oxford. And to purchase your Addicts 3-pack, please head to booking.cafc.co.uk. Now we can confirm that our home fixture against Exeter City in Skybet League One has been rearranged for Tuesday, October the 11th and will kick off at 7.45pm. The fixture was of course postponed last weekend following the passing of Her Late Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Supporters who had tickets for the original date should note that their tickets will be valid for the new one. And Charlton TV fans should also be aware that the move to a midweek fixture means that the game will now be available to live stream worldwide, including the UK and Ireland. We're staying on the subject of Charlton TV and would like to remind our international fans that annual and monthly Charlton TV subscriptions remain on sale. They are priced at £220 per annum or £35 per month. Will be 10 league games into the season after today and even if you buy a subscription now you'll still be making a huge saving on match-to-match -match purchases. Don't forget, as well as live streams of all men's league matches, there is a host of other content you can get with your subscription, including the live streaming of under-21 and women's team home fixtures. You can get yours by heading to cafc.co.uk right now. Now, we'd like to extend our congratulations to Karen Hills and the Charlton women's team for their victory over Birmingham at the Valley on Sunday. A double from Ella Rutherford and a poacher's finish from Angela Addison secured the Addicts' second victory of the season in the Barclays Women's Championship, lifting them up to third place. The Charlton women's team are back in action tomorrow afternoon when they head to Sunderland. Everyone at Charlton TV wishes them all the very best of luck. And you have to say, Brownie, that's brilliant. And the experience of playing at the Valley as well is... is is absolutely invaluable to them. Yeah, I, I, I don't understand, if I'm honest, why we can't have the ladies' team playing every week, or you know, every fixture that they're at home, obviously. You know, I, I, I don't know why we can't separate. You know, the men's play one week, ladies another. So, uh, it's one of those things that I know Alan Kerber, she's been pushing for for yes. years on the panel that he sits on um, but a couple of good finishes there as well they were yeah, Rutherford with a lovely left foot finish cultured bit, left foot no, little, like, she, I don't see many of them do you Scotty no not, not anymore <laughs> Those little bit like the last girl, like. <laughs> <laughs> look as you were seen by now we aren't at the valley due to an external event <laughs> taking place there we, of course, are very grateful to Barnsley for allowing us to present the show from here. The question was asked by fans during the week as to where we would be presenting the show from today. <laughs> and Brownie was delighted to see fans suggest a couple of alternative studio for us. Now, actually, we did do some rehearsals in the Valley Cafe. Then we tried it in Nelson Mandela House <laughs> in Peckham. Didn't quite work, though, Brownie. Did it? <laughs> no, no, we would have rather been there. We would have saved, we would have saved the, the five-hour train journey to Camp Ride from hell. <laughs> That's brilliant, though, because there, there, there yeah. were people on, on social media sort of saying what they're going to do, who's going to... There, there's another picture of us where they've just put our faces on, and it doesn't, it's not very complimentary. It really isn't. It's Del Boy, uh, Grandad, and, and, and Rodney. And you he, were Del Boy, oh, Curtis yeah. Grandad, and I was but Rodney. Did, I didn't suit the Del Boy role, I've got to tell you. It was awful. I don't think any of us suited uh, <laughs> anyway, but that was absolutely fantastic. OK, right, we were, of course, delighted to hear from South Korean fan Kyung Min Ji a couple of weeks ago. And today we have another message to bring you, this time from Jeffrey Chang in Hong Kong. Take it away, Jeffrey. Hello everyone, my name is Jeffrey and I come from Hong Kong. I've been the Attic friends since 1999. Up the Attics, Absolutely brilliant, Jeffrey. Thank you very much. 1999, you were at the club then, weren't you? 
Yeah. Yeah. I was at the club for quite a long period. Were, were, were you playing or on the bench? <laughs> uh, be, I was probably bench. 99? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I mean, you can pick any 90 year and, and into the 2000s, there's a good chance I was on the bench. Yeah. Sorry, you're laughing, Shirty. I'm just doing the role that Curves would have played. Yeah, 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 I like it. Really. I'm loving it. Yeah. Well, you, you know you know, I was out for a meal with him on Thursday and I walked in and because you were supposed to go and you I weren't here. I was supposed to go, yeah. And the opening line was, off the bench again to fill in for Minto. <laughs> I hadn't even sat down. <laughs> so, <laughs> cheers. It started straight away. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Jeffrey. And remember, if you do live overseas, you can get in touch by emailing fans at cafc.co.uk. OK, finally, the club were delighted to confirm the appointment of Lewis Catt as fan advisor yesterday. Lewis, a lifelong fan who regularly appears on popular fan podcast Charlton Live. Really good listen, that will work alongside Lucy Bishop to provide a link between fans and the club's ownership. Supporters can contact Lewis and Lucy by emailing fanadvisor at cafc.co.uk. That's advisor with an E. OK, right, youngsters Aaron Henry and Richard Chin, of course, made their debut in recent weeks and they were absolutely delighted to be presented with their debut shirts. Really nice moment, especially to see all of the boys in the academy and like, the first team boys come out. And obviously, I know nearly everyone that came out and seen the staff that helped me get here as well. Um, it's just nice to see everyone um, and have that moment. When I think about when I came in as a full time player, I think that's when I really started to kick on. And I've been wanting to get that for a while since obviously I made my debut a couple of years ago now. So um, to finally get it was, was like a big moment for me. One thing I wanted to say about these two lads, apart from the usual, that I think they've worked so hard to get where they they are now and they realise they're on a journey and the journey's got some way to go. But I think both of them are dedicated clearly to get there and it's an inspiration to the rest of you here, standing here. I've still got loads to go, so just hoping to really kick on this season and get some more minutes. Now I'm just kind of focused and doing the best I can each day in training, coming in. Yeah, great to hear from Aaron, Richard, and of course Academy Director Steve Avery as well. And, and chaps, I don't remember being given a shirt making my debut. Do you? Certainly not in my day, Scottish one. No. I certainly <laughs> remember we weren't allowed to keep any of the shirts that we wore as well. Oh yes. <laughs> he said it was a tradition. I don't know. When did it start? Because we definitely didn't get our shirt that we made our debut in. It was it was post our time, I have to say. But I have to say though, Shirty, it's a great thing the club is doing there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's that, great. That's something they can hang up and keep forever. It's fantastic. Uh, it's really, I really improved the, this sort of aspect of that youth, youth development. I really like that. As a senior pro, what, what advice did you used to give, or what would you give even now to young pros? Keep your feet on the ground for one thing. Um, sometimes that can be diff difficult depending on the level that they're at. Um, and always listen and always learn. Keep, keep improving throughout your career. Because if you stand still in this game, you go backwards. Absolutely, and, and Steve was right there, wasn't he? They should be an inspiration to everybody in the academy. And there's those two, there's Miles as well. That There's a real opportunity to get towards the first team here, isn't there? Yeah, and I think Curve said on air last week about Miles should should go in and they should applaud him when he goes in and has his first breakfast because he, you know, it's a, it was a wonderful goal last week. and. Uh, you know, and, it, and it, it should sort of spur on the ones that are close or think they're close to just push that little extra. I mean, I, I, I would have give advice to just shut out the noise, you know, and, and don't look anywhere else. Look in the mirror first. Yeah. Always look at you first. Don't look anywhere else for an excuse or a reason why. Look at yourself and shut out all the outside noise. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. You've never made it. That's the best no, way you to haven't. end it. You've I never agree. made it. Keep well, working it's a good hard. Show. Okay, let's move on to one of our favourite uh, parts of the show. Then, shall we? Your questions on WhatsApp. Um, are you ready for these, Shirty? Yeah, yeah go on. It'll be mostly you. <laughs> <laughs> They're mostly to Curves. And Curves is here. We got mostly to you now as well. Okay, first up, and we will start with you, Shirty. Have you got any friends or family in Leeds? And do those goals come up in conversation much when you see them? That's from Peter in Florida. Okay. Uh, no, I haven't got any relatives or friends in Leeds. I don't. I don't think I have anywhere. You did have. <laughs> oh, oh, I tell you what. I, I have got one friend, and he's called John Sheridan, and he lives in Leeds. And he scored the Leeds goal that day, and he's not very happy with me that I scored the two 
that beat them. <laughs> so he's, he's a good pal, Shez, so uh, yeah, that, yeah. That, that's one guy. Brilliant. Kev from Welling, uh, and he, he must have a, a really good memory here, Kev. He says he remembers seeing me driving to training once in a dark blue BMW and wants to know what model it was. Actually, do you know what, Kev? It was a light blue, and I bought it off Andy Peak. So um, that was my third car, because the question here is, what was your first car after becoming a professional? I'll, I'll go first, actually. Mine was, um, I bought it off my dad for 1,500 quid. Right. Uh, Mark three Escort gear. Mine was and, then, and then I bought an MGB GT. Right. It was a little, little 1966, which is brilliant. And then I bought Peaky's car off him. Yeah, I think I bought Gritty's car, weirdly. <laughs> <Did you? laughs> yeah, I bought it was an Escort, whatever it was. And uh, it broke down after two weeks of buying it off him. <laughs> 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 typical gritty, like gritty. Typical Gritty. And he just started laughing. I went in and went, cheers for that, thanks. He just started laughing. Yeah. What was yeah. your, your first car? Just, just, just before that, if you bought one off Peaky and you bought one off Gritty, <laughs> you, you didn't get a good deal there, by the way. <laughs> Peaky so, was desperate oh, to sell to me, he really was. <laughs> saw me coming. Of <laughs> yeah, he saw me coming. Yeah. <laughs> So my first car was a Mini Clubman. Oh God, it was, the bodywork wasn't the best, but uh, yeah, 500 quid. Okay, we're, we're talking about your car, not your, not your girlfriend. <laughs> <really>. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine getting a Clubman? It must be. <laughs> I know, yeah. Uh, Daniel, moving swiftly on. Daniel in Lincolnshire asks, what was the best coach journey home you had, you ever had after winning away from home? Now, now I, I, I was given this question yesterday and I still can't think of yeah, a, a particular time, but any time away from home where we won, you get the beers in the back of the bus, you were allowed oh, to back then, weren't you? It was great, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I mean, they were different times, weren't they? Yeah, they were. Yeah, Does mean, anyone stand out for you? I, I, I agree with you, I think because they all kind of mould into, yeah, you're, yeah. You're like, my brain's not giving me one specific away game, they all mould no. into one, but any wins, you know, particularly when you're at the top yeah. level and, and you know, and yeah. you're not really fancy and you go to an Arsenal win or, yeah. they're great days. Oh, right. okay. And yeah, yeah. okay, you, you oh, want sure. it, you I want mean, Arsenal, at Chelsea, right. You've banged him with a head no. and that's got to be a great yeah. journey, we, I mean, we, it's only a short journey. We, but we've had some great trips, I mean, let's be honest, away from home, you, you, you've had a great win, there's all the boys together, you have a yes. few beers on the bus, it's yeah. Fantastic, yes. wasn't it? And it was then you fantastic. crack on after it as well. You oh, just, no, just leave, yeah. leave, leave the car. Leave the car. Uh, yeah, yeah, I got it. Yeah. Okay, again, moving swiftly on. <laughs> this one for you, Brownie, as, as, as you've seen us more regularly this season. Bob Gaston in the Costa del Sol uh, says he feels like we need another effective number nine and asks what type of striker we should be looking for. <laughs> Dropped a little bomb in there, haven't they? Uh, well, look, look, I think everybody recognises we need somebody that, with a bit of pace that can turn the opposition defence around, stretch the game, because at the moment I think it's a little bit predictable. Our pace is out wide, um, and, and that is effective. You know, don't get me wrong, that's effective. The, the biggest thing for me is getting more numbers in the box and, and, and good deliveries from those wide areas. But in, in terms of a, a lone striker centre forward, you know, what Jaden doesn't really possess is that drop of the shoulder, five yards in behind, one ball over the top. So we kind of come a little bit predictable with him dropping short. So if there was a striker, it would need to be one that can turn the opposition defence okay, around. Okay, we're, we're, we're over, as we normally are. So we'll race through these next two. And, and actually, this first one, I'm going to say, we, we shouldn't really be racing through, but we're going to have to. So maybe we'll come to it a little bit later or, or another week. Because it's a really good question from Gary of the Swedish Addicts. If the guys in the studio had one week to work with the squads, and perhaps I'll throw it just to you here, because it's a bit unfair you, to throw it to you, Shirty. You are behind time, though. You do. <laughs> but yeah, actually, yeah, I'll throw it to you, Shirty. <laughs> It'll spend 10 minutes at least. If the guys in the studio had one week to work with the squads, what three things would you focus on? It's a really good question. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've already mentioned it once. I mean, three, three you, 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 you are going to run over time by a considerable amount. Okay, but can, the first can you thing is, point? Well, the, well, the right. first one right. certainly is, is more players in the box when we're getting good attack but the quality of delivery whether that be a pass whether that be a cross we're not we're getting into great areas and we're not putting in enough quality you can look at individuals within the team for that you know but you can certainly work on it on the training ground I always look at us when we give the ball away when we're trying to be expansive and open and we give the ball away I would certainly work on our defensive shape on the turnover in our own half when we're not supposed to be giving it away I don't think we get into a defensive shape well enough and people can pick us off and we're quite vulnerable in wide areas okay was that three no Right. No, I'll come back to you. No, we'll do, we'll do, we'll, you could be ages, as I yeah, say. Yeah, you could be, yeah. yeah. Yeah, just been told we're five minutes over, so they're seeing if they can put the kickoff back, but we've been <laughs> told to no at the moment. Final one then, um, quick one, non-footballing one from Stephen in Maidstone. What's your favourite thing to eat at a barbecue 
And do any of you back yourselves in the kitchen? I don't but, mind doing a barbecue. But you like doing the barbecue? Yeah, I do like to what do What do you barbecue. eat? Do you, do you buy any extra of a particular, whether it's sausage or burger or chicken? Or? Mainly chicken and burgers. Yeah? Yeah, chicken and burgers. For me, any type of meat, and in, in the kitchen, the only, the only thing I can do really is a roast. Yeah. A roast chicken, roast potatoes. I did one last night, funny enough. Yeah, I'll back myself in the kitchen all day long. Would yeah. you? Yeah, I've got a wife that's terrible in the kitchen. So I have to defend myself. My mum never cooked me when I was a kid. It was tough. <laughs> it was tough upbringing, mate. Explains a lot, mate. Explains a lot. Yeah. So, you know, fend yourself early. I've got beans on toast in the locker. <laughs> yeah, well done. Man. No, I can cook. Yeah, yeah I don't okay. so, we, we really had uh, better leave it there. But of course, uh, remember, anywhere in the world, please, here's the number. Just get in touch via WhatsApp and we will try to get your questions out. We've got a few more, so we'll perhaps we'll use them for after the show. We'll leave it there for now, though. OK, right. A midfielder, Scott Frazier, has started the season in good form. I think it's fair to say three goals and, of course, a dad for the first time. And he spoke to Charlton TV yesterday. First of all, a life-changing couple of weeks for you with baby Miley coming into the world. I mean, how much has your life changed in that time? Yeah, uh, drastically already, as you say, in the space of a week. Um, it goes from everything about you to you're the least of the worries. Um, and she becomes a priority, which is um, what we found. But it's been amazing. Um, we've, we've really enjoyed it so far and long, long may it continue. You missed um, the Forest Green game. But we're back at Fleetwood on Saturday. Did you manage to get much sleep in that in that time? We went into the hospital Sunday night. Um, we're, we got out Wednesday uh, morning, and then I travelled down to Stoke to meet the boys um, on Friday. Trained, travelled up to Fleetwood. Obviously played. So it was one of them where you just you're just trying to you know get your teeth and get through. Um, and we done that in the end as a team. As a team, we done that. Um, I think the most sleep I got was probably on the Friday night before, before that game. And I mean, professional football is obviously very full on. It's it's very emotional, and I know after having a baby that that emotion and passion won't change from you. But is it nice as well to be able to now go home and and have something to maybe take your mind off of? Yeah, it's the first time even Saturday at Fleetwood. Um, I drove back up to Scotland after the game and I wasn't particularly happy with the game in terms of, well, I think we should have won in terms of the chances. Particularly the second half, I thought we were a lot better. Uh, so it's one of the where you think, you know, we, we should have won that game. Um, but when I get when I got back up the road and, you know, I see the missus and, and the baby, it, you sort of almost forget about the game for a period of time and just concentrate on her. So that's been a good distraction. And we do, saying that, we do have to focus on football though, don't we? Your start to the season, three goals already from midfield. How pleased have you been with the start you've made? Yeah, I've been really pleased. Um, individually, I think, yeah, I think I've got better as the season's gone on. Um, I always knew that would be the case. You know, I think every player, the more games you play, the, the better rhythm you get, the sharper you get. So I had no doubt on that. Um, the goals as well, it's something that I like to... I like to bring to my game. I think it's important from midfield, particularly in the way we play with the 4-3-3, the two, two eights with the two wingers and the one striker. I think it's important that the two eights are chipping in. And thankfully, I managed to do that. And now, obviously, not the distraction, but I obviously knew the baby was was due. And so now she's here. Um, I can stop worrying about that side of it and, and concentrate on football as well now. And how much are you enjoying? The system because I think I mean it, it's probably fair to say that of the midfield three you've probably got the most license to to get yourself in the box how much you enjoy it yeah well that's what I see myself as as more of an attacking midfielder um, someone who likes to get goals get assists create chances and I like the responsibility that the gaffer puts on me in that sense you know he's always he's always on to me about what he wants from me um, I know he expects highly of me. I think the system suits a lot of the boys here. Obviously, we've recruited well for that system, um, but we can adapt. I think we've got good players here who can adapt to different sort of ways the gaffer wants to play. Um, I think in terms of the main shape that we've been playing, I think 
for me personally, it's brilliant. I think I think it's you look at the best teams in the world, majority are playing that sort of shape. I think it, the way we, we like to play it gives us good control, good, gives us good balance. Um, so yeah, it's just about it's about us being more ruthless. I think in both boxes. I think from box to box, I think we're very good. I think we control a lot of the games. As I say, we're only nine games into what is a brand new way of playing, brand new shape, system, everything. So we'll, I will no doubt we'll, we'll only continue to get better. And Barnsley to come on Saturday, I mean, you, you could say they're in kind of a similar boat to us in that they've got a new manager, they're a big club at this level. Um, do you think Saturday is going to be sort of won or lost in those two boxes, like you say? Yeah, I think majority of football matches are, you know, if you could score a goal and keep it up at the other end, you're going to win games. Um, They've obviously, I think, I think they've had quite a big squad overhaul as well. Um, as you say, after relegation, new manager, they'll have a new way of playing. I'd imagine we'll see much of them. Um, so yeah, it'll be. I think you look at the away games we've had this season. Bar Bolton, first half Bolton. Um, you know, we went to Sheffield Wednesday. We, we were the better team. We should win that game. But I think it's it's going to get to the stage where we can't keep saying, you know, we should have won, we could have won. I think we need to go and to go and show that we are a good team for longer spells of those games and when we get the chances to be ruthless. I just say it both times. Now I've got to say, it's starting to get very, very loud around here, so we couldn't hear the whole of that interview. But Shirty, I do want to ask you, because we've had a, a few babies being born from the squad uh, this season. How, how difficult is it to combine? I, I never did it. I, I didn't have kids until after I, I finished playing. How difficult is it to combine playing and parenthood? That's something I can't give an answer to Scott because I don't know any kids right, either. let's go to Brown so, <laughs> Well, I had two at the age of 27 and uh, yeah, it's, it's it's definitely a change around because you're up at, you're up in the uh, you know, early hours of most mornings. I, all I asked for was you know, Thursday, Friday, can I be in a room by myself and you deal with the kids. Other than that, I was full on and uh, it, it's the greatest time of your life but it, it's also your, your matchsticks, you know, it's, it's, it's hard work sleeping wise. <laughs> We were sensible, weren't we? We got we a career away from first. <laughs> Thought I was so alone. <laughs> in terms of Scott, though, uh, Shirty, that, that sort of box to box and, and getting in late, timing the runs, from a defensive point of view, how difficult is it to pick up a player like him if he times his runs right? That's the diff most difficult one to pick up. The late run, like Frank Lampard, was great at it. If you can time it perfectly, it's very, very difficult to pick up because you've, you've got enough worrying about the strikers, really, without midfield players coming into the box. So it is a tough one, that, to defend. So the atmosphere is really building up. I have to say, love being here, Pitside. So I'm really, right. really enjoying it. Absolutely. But you're going to be leaving us now because yeah. you are going to be co-commentator alongside Terry. Yeah. So listen, good to see you. Cheers. And uh, good luck with the game as well. Please Thank bring you. us three points. See you later. See you so, Friday. Yep. Uh, let's talk about, if we touch on the sort of last week and bring that forward to today as yep. well. well. What did you see last week in that second half that you want to see more of today? Well, we were more aggressive. We changed shape. We got our danger players into the correct positions. And I, I, I'm not saying that in, in, in terms of, you know, they made a mistake first half. I think it's right to try different systems. If you don't try it, you don't know. But it didn't work. And, and the good thing is we did recognise that, we did change it and we got our, our danger players in the right areas and we came a, a much more attacking side in, in the second 45. What we need to do today is not start like last week. We got put on the back foot, they outworked us, they outpressed us, they were more aggressive physically and we've got to make sure we don't start like we did last week, which was a bit tentative, it was a bit weak. And we need to be like, every, every League One game you need to show a physicality in the first 10 minutes yeah. and you've got to match the opponent. Certainly can't do that here today. Barnsley need a couple of, uh, of home wins actually. They've been excellent on the road, not so good here, um, but they are getting better. But we certainly don't want to be overrun like we did last week in the first 10, 15 minutes. So both teams coming out led by the referee and the, the match officials as well. There is a child to contingent just to my right who have made the trip up and well, they must have suffered that, that horrible journey as well, Brownie. Yeah, I mean, obviously there was nothing you could do to avoid it. No. It wasn't anything that the train companies could have done to avoid it. It was just one of those things. But you can see people scrambling. You get, I mean, we had to shut off at Chesterfield. We were two stops short of where we were supposed to go and people are scrambling, uh, you know, and, and how to get here. So, as the Charlton fans always do, they find a way. They are here Absolutely. and they're in good voice. And they're making noise as well. It's good atmosphere here. 
<laughs> yeah. Listen, uh, what I would say about the, the away fans, they always sing. They always make a noise. Uh, hopefully, they've got something to sing about by the end of play today. So what are we expecting today? Three changes have been made, we've gone back to the four. Do you feel more comfortable that way? I, I think the team have been more comfortable that way. I'm really looking forward to the right-hand side. I think Egbo, who's got pace, power, um, he showed a, a, a real fortitude in terms of getting forward last week. Um, him linking up with Raksaki, I think that could be a key battlefield for us. I think, I think will Barnsley change the way they play if we start getting on top down that right-hand side? Looking forward to that battle. OK, well, here we are at Oakwell. We said uh, making history at Charlton TV, and we certainly are doing that, the fact we're not in the studio at the Valley. And it's a, it's a lovely day. It's perfect conditions here for players, I have to say. Both sets of teams still warming up at the moment. Go on, give us a final prediction then, Browning. Do you feel we can get our, our first away win of the season today? I, I, yeah, I think you've always got to be positive at the start of the 90 minutes. You know, the team's getting stronger. Setting you on back on the bench. We're starting to get more competition for places. Um, what, what I would say is, we, I've, I've already said it, but can we get a 90-minute performance? If we get a 90-minute performance, I think we've got a very good chance of winning the game. I, I don't want to see a patchy performance again. 30 here, it's 45 there. Get on top of the opponent early, physically match what they're doing, and then sustain it. OK. Let's get to our commentary team then, shall we? It is Terry Smith and Peter Shirtley. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, uh, Brownie. Yes. Uh, Welcome to Oakwell, everybody, and uh, alongside me, uh, who's uh, scampered up from pitch side, uh, looking as fit as he ever did uh, when he played, is, uh, well, I've got Yorkshire royalty, well, uh, not just Yorkshire royalty, <laughs> Barnsley royalty, as well as uh, Hoyland royalty, Peter Shirtley. Peter, it's, it's great to have you alongside me again. Cheers, Terry. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the game. We've um, just had the coin toss and the presentations to the mascots, etc. It looks at the moment as if uh, it's going to be 